What's up, y'all? LSX Body coming at you mad scientist style from the Scorpion Shack. Now, when I first did my LS swap in my Nova, um, I actually installed Vintage Air AC in the car. And uh, at the time, I didn't want to cut into my subframe, so I did a high mount passenger side AC bracket. I did that myself based on, uh, if you remember back in the day, a company called Quick. I don't know if they're still around, I haven't checked in a while. Um, but I used a design. I based my design off of what they did and came up with something that was slightly tweaked from that. When I went to the LSA, I figured that I should try and keep that high mount AC and add to that bracket in order to uh, put the tensioner up high. Now there are a few solutions online that you can find. I think LS Simple, LSX Innovations, LSX Concepts, uh, ICT Billet. There are many companies that make a belt drive for the LSA. There's a couple problems with all of these. One, a lot of them are a six rib only. That means that I would be running AC, alternator, power steering, supercharger, water pump, all on a six rib belt. I wasn't looking forward to that whatsoever. Now LSX Concepts have a couple of different uh, eight rib designs. First, they've got one that is, uh, it comes with a single tensioner, and it's very basic design. It's like $350 or $400, something like that. They've also got a heavy duty design that is manually tensioned. Now, if you've ever seen a supercharger during transient operation, that belt flops around a lot. So for me, it was very important to have a tensioner instead of having something that was manually tensioned. I talked to somebody on LS1 Tech um, who had a horror story about that heavy duty uh, LSX Concepts design. Now, I also talked to ICT Billet. They showed me a six rib design, said it worked great with one of their vehicles, um, and it was fairly straightforward and actually pretty inexpensive. So if you are truly wanting to go with a six rib design, uh, certainly go and look at one of those companies. With that in mind, I came up with my own design. I took my high mount AC bracket and modified it in order to put a uh, tensioner. Now this took a lot of time, a lot of effort, uh, and a lot of of uh, time spent on Deco and Gates websites trying to find tensioners. I actually talked to Magnus and Superchargers. I found a tensioner that they used. They were kind enough to give me a Gates part number for the tensioner. I used that Gates part number to cross-reference with Deco. Deco's online catalog, if you've never checked it out, is incredible. They give you just about every spec that you need, every measurement, how wide, what offset, inner diameter on bearings for pulleys and, and what have you. It's an incredible thing. So I uh, highly recommend checking out the Dayco website if you ever, ever are doing something similar to this. So after a couple of iterations, a lot of woodworking, and a lot of time spent in the garage and on the computer catting things out, uh, I got some help from a buddy of mine. You might know him as Frojo on LS1 Tech. He's also on Instagram. He's also made a couple of uh, videos here on YouTube, but the dude's incredible. Uh, he has a killer Nova too, a 72 uh, twin turbo Nova with an LS in it. Anyways, he helped me come up with this design right here. This is a combination, air conditioning, uh, tensioner, six rib tensioner, as well as eight rib tensioner design. This mimics the OEM LSA design. The tensioner itself sits almost in the same spot Unfortunately, the way the six rib belt is run, I couldn't quite get it just as low as the OEM, OEM LSA, but I got it close. What that means is you're able to use a lot of LSA components. So I was actually able to use the OEM LSA uh, idler bracket and upper idler. I had to go with a slightly different lower idler, but at the very least, I was able to use a proven OEM style design. Now this uses a tensioner from a 2004, 2005, something like that, Ford F550, F650 big rig. So this has an eight rib pulley, and more importantly, it's actually got the arm on the outside of the pulley itself. This was important because I didn't want the arm interfering with the six rib belt. Now in order to make this work with my bracket, I actually came up with a spacer that had a provision for this pin and was also pinned at the bracket. Let me show you that. So this spacer right here mounts onto this AC bracket right towards the top. You see there's a hole right here for this pin to slide into. And then a hole right there, which the tensioner slides into. And then that's all bolted together. 
This is then boxed in with the rear. These basically sandwich a spacer, which helps give this strength by boxing these two together. Now rounding out this design is a C5 Corvette tensioner. This tensioner comes with a ribbed pulley. This ribbed pulley, you actually remove it and use this as an upper idler. You then pick up a 70 millimeter diameter, which is the same diameter as that pulley, a uh, smooth pulley, install that onto this, and away you go. So that's the basic design of my AC and tensioner bracket assembly. Now I'm gonna head to the garage, where I don't have AC, and show you how to install these into the car. Let's go check it out. Now here you see me installing the six rib tensioner. I used all M10 fasteners, just like the OEM design. Followed by, here's the upper idler. See there's a spacer there, as well as another spacer sandwiched between those two brackets. And then here is the eight rib tensioner. This again has a uh, spacer between the two brackets. And finally the Sandin 508 compressor that came with my vintage air kit. Now this is installed with four bolts and you see a couple of spacers on the back side there to space it correctly. And here's how it turned out. You know, I'm quite happy with this bracket. You see those spacers that are sandwiched between the two brackets there. I think that this is a pretty robust design. I've ran it for a few hundred miles now, and I did have some fasteners that were loose. I must not have tightened them enough at first, um, which did uh, have some issues with a belt. But after I got that taken care of, I haven't had any more issues since then. Now this is all tied together with a power steering and alternator bracket from ICT Billet. I'm using a 105 amp alternator from my LQ4 and a C5 Corvette power steering pump. The bracket also comes with its own idler as well as all the fasteners that you need. And rounding out the hardware, I installed a stock CTSV crank pulley. Now my power steering reservoir is from a Honda Element. It just fits in between my front end accessories and my inlet. Um, this thing's about three and a half inches, I believe, in diameter. I made a custom bracket that I just bolted right there to the uh, alternator bracket, uh, just out of a piece of sheet metal, nothing too big. And then to keep the thing in place, because it just slides in like that, I used another piece of uh, just sheet metal, and then I bolt the thing together. Now this cost me a bit less than what some of those companies are offering for their solutions. Uh, at the expense of obviously my time and, and effort that I put into it. Uh, but if it's something you're interested in, I could certainly help get you set up. Um, you know, if you don't need AC, then this is, I think, overkill because this bracket that I made is specifically for AC and you could drop that uh, eight rib tensioner down quite a bit if you weren't running an AC pump like I am, or uh, an AC compressor rather like I am. You know, and if you're just looking for a drop-in solution uh, and don't mind the six rib setup, again, look at ICT Billet, look at some of those other guys too. Uh, I know ICT makes a, a great uh, six rib setup. At least they they say that they've got a, you know, a truck that's out there running, I think 550, 600 horsepower, something like that. So um, it's definitely worth a look. Anyway, drop a comment. Let me know what you think. Find me on Instagram and uh, I will catch you guys later. All right. See ya.